Welcome this afternoon. It's the fourth Sunday of Easter, but tomorrow is actually the feast day of St. Mark. So I thought I would uh, pick out St. Mark and the reading from his service for tomorrow as our sort of main feature this afternoon. The service is actually called an, an evening service of the word, which is a fairly new put compilation in the common worship library. So there are some slightly different responses to come today. So I hope we will follow that through. So we begin with an opening greeting. So if we'd like to have an opening greeting. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. And let us pray together. Faithful one whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. To free our praise, it says, and to free our praise we will have. So we'll hear the hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Let us admit to God the sin which always confronts us. Say together, Lord God, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you. Uh, we, we have, have done, done evil in your evil. sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with us. The Lord forgive us our sins. The Lord remember us as we go forth to serve him in the world. Amen. And we have a response to forgiveness now. 
Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. To you be glory and praise forever. When the time had fully come, you sent the Son of Righteousness. In him, the fullness of your glory dwells. To you be glory and praise forever. God has redeemed us from our sins. And now we have a more modern worship song, There is a Redeemer. search for pictures of St Mark you will often find him pictured with a lion and you can see this picture here he had the lion and at the beginning we had that lion with wings he's actually associated with a roaring lion which according to tradition comes from his boldness in delivering the message of John the Baptist which he received from Jesus Christ and he became known as the voice of the lion in the desert. So how much do we know about St Mark? Mark is known as Mark the Evangelist, and most historians equate him with John Mark, who is referred to in the Acts of the Apostles. The records suggest he was born around AD 5 in Cyrene in North Africa. His mother, had a home in Jerusalem, which was believed to be a center for the early Christian people. It is probable that he witnessed some of Christ's miracles, and it is possible that he was one of the 70 sent out by Jesus. 
After Pentecost, he was prominent with Peter proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. He left home later to follow St. Paul and traveled with him as a fellow missionary. At some point in his life, he went to Africa, founded the church in Alexandria, and for some time became its bishop. During his time in Alexandria, he performed a miraculous healing of the cobbler, and Ananias, who then wanted to learn all about Christianity. Later, Ananias became a bishop in the Egyptian church. Mark also spent some time in Rome, and is he believed to be, have written his gospel based on the sermons of Peter, which he shared quite a lot of time with. He eventually returned to Alexandria, where he was bartered in AD 68 by the local pagans. So how much do we know from scripture? In Acts chapter 12, there are two references to Mark. Peter had his miraculous release from prison and headed for a safe haven. It says, as soon as he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many had gathered and were praying. We know that he knocked on the door and they wouldn't let him in to start with, it says. This may well be the same home of Mary, mother of um, John, which um, we mentioned earlier on. It also could have been the location of the upper room where the Last Supper took place. Some also believe that Mark was the young man who fled naked at the arrest of Jesus, especially as it's only mentioned in Mark's Gospel. However, Peter didn't stay at that house, he moved on, if you look at the end of the reading. After giving his instructions to tell James, he left for another place. Later in the same chapter, Barnabas and Paul are mentioned returning to Jerusalem with John, also called Mark. Mark and Barnabas were recorded by Paul as being cousins in his letter to the Colossians. As does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. Mark then went off with Paul and Barnabas on the journey to Cyprus and Pamphylia, from where Mark returned to Jerusalem. The reading comes from Acts chapter 15. After some days, Paul said to Barnabas, come, let us return to visit the believers. In every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Barnabas wanted to take them with them John called Mark. Paul decided not to take with him, take him with them, because he had deserted them in Pamphylia and had not accompanied them in their work. This degree of disagreement became so sharp that they parted company. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and set out, the believers commending him to the grace of the Lord. He went through Syria and Sicilia, strengthening the churches. So life was not all plain sailing for the missionaries as we heard. Paul was obviously a bit upset that Mark had deserted them in Pamphylia, as when Barnabas suggested that Mark accompany them on the next journey, Paul gave a firm no. It would seem that he felt let down by Mark. This caused a bigger rift, and so Paul and Silas went off in one direction, and Barnabas and Mark in another. Disagreements among Christians are nothing new. So did the story end there? No. There are no other actual mentions of Mark in the Acts of the Apostles. However, there are been some later reconciliation, it must have been some reconciliation later, because in Paul's letter to Timothy, he asks Timothy to call upon Mark to come and join him. It says in Timothy's letter, do your best to come to me quickly. For Demas, because he loved this world, has departed me has gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia and Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you because he is helpful to me in my ministry. That relationship between Paul and Mark seems to have been healed. 
in the closing greeting of the letter of Colossians, Paul also says, my fellow prisoner, Aristarchus, sends you his greetings, as does Mark, the cousin of Barnabas. You have received instructions about him. If he comes to you, welcome him. Similarly, when Peter was in Rome, he seemed close to Mark as he concluded his letter, she who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, sends you her greetings, as so does my son Mark. Greet one another with a kiss of love. Peace to all of you who are in Christ. Uh, Babylon, in fact, I had a quick look at why, why did he refer to Babylon? There are a couple of options. One of the small garrison town, Roman garrison town in the Euphrates, but it is more likely he is equating it to Rome because Rome destroyed Jerusalem just as Babylon destroyed Jerusalem many centuries earlier. So it's a sort of a, a reference to not a nice people to be with. So what can we learn from the story of Mark? We are all different and have our own preferences and understanding of our faith and its traditions. Yes, we can have disagreements and there will be people with whom we do not see eye to eye. At the end of the day, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, called to love each other and to work and serve together as the body of Christ. Nowhere does it say we actually have to like each other. There may be times when we do not realise we have upset or offended others. When we have differences, we have to seek the common ground and show tolerance and forgiveness in the love of Christ. And after the example of Paul, look for reconciliation and the rebuilding of relationships. It's not always easy as deep-rooted grudges are sometimes difficult to weed out. It may not happen instantly. And it could be a long time before everyone is at ease and at peace with each other. And of course, our prime example are the words from the cross. In extreme suffering, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And it is only by grace that we can receive the peace that comes with the relationship restored. Amen. Amen. So let us now turn to prayer and we'll begin with the collect of St. Mark. Almighty God, who enlightened your holy church through the inspired witness of your evangelist St. Mark, grant that we, being firmly grounded in the truth of the gospel, may be faithful to its teaching both in word and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So let us pray that the rest of this day may be holy, peaceful and full of your presence. Pray that all who have gathered to worship you today have been aware of your love for all people. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. That the work we have done and the people we have met today may bring us closer to you. We give thanks for all those who work for the good of others, especially all those in the caring professions. Those that have given up their time, spare time, to bring the vaccines to others. Which we had thankfully today. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. That we may hear and respond to your call to peace and justice. We pray for the nations of the world, especially India and Brazil at this time, <clears throat> facing the chaos caused by the rapid spreading of the pandemic. In faith, we pray. We pray to you, our God. We pray that you will sustain the faith and hope of those who are lonely, oppressed and anxious. We pray for those known to us in any kind of need. We pray for those who mourn, especially we think of those lost in the submarine that sank in and for the uh, explosion of the Iraqi hospital where there are many killed and many injured. 
Thanks all working to retrieve and rescue. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. We pray that you will strengthen us in your service and fill our hearts with longing for your kingdom. We pray that your church throughout the world continues to proclaim the Easter message of hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In faith we pray. We pray to you, our God. God of mercy. You know us and love us and hear our prayer. Keep us in the eternal fellowship of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We gather those prayers, all spoken and unspoken, in the words that Jesus gave to us, saying together, Our Father, our Father in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn actually exhorts us to do what Mark and all his colleagues were doing. So go forth and tell the message of Jesus. Let us pray. Merciful Father, you gave your Son Jesus Christ to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection and give us grace to follow in his steps through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us pray together. In darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy. Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Darkness is not dark to you. 
The night is as bright as the day. Let your light scatter the darkness. And fill your church with your glory. Amen.